Um, cool. So from here, we're going to go to our final show of the day. We have Surabi, who's going to be talking about parallel JavaScript in the browser and how amazing that can be. So Surabi, why don't you take us away? Thank you, Amri. Hello, everyone. This is Surabi Nigam, and I'm going to talk about web workers. This is an overview of my talk. First, I'll be talking what web workers are, then why do we need them? Then there'll be a small demo, and then behind the scenes, how web workers work. Then web workers in JavaScript frameworks today. And then finally, the references. So this dialogue. I'm sure everybody must have seen this dialogue once or twice, or maybe every day in their lives. So why do we see them? So for a web page to run smoothly, we need, we need 60 frames per second. And if we do a little math, we find that it's 16 milliseconds per frame, which is too less. And since we know that JavaScript is single threaded, so that single thread has to do painting and rendering of a, U, a UI. And it also has to do JavaScript execution. If JavaScript is com complex and it's taking too long to run, then UI gets compromised. There's no one to render and paint UI. And that's then our UI becomes unresponsive and we see that dialogue. But the same JavaScript also gives you a solution, which is web workers. So this diagram shows how our thread, main thread creates a worker thread and then it communicates with that thread through messages. And then it, at the end, it can terminate the uh, worker thread or worker thread can terminate itself. So what exactly web worker is? It is a way of running JavaScript in the background and not interfering with the UI. And it can do anything that a regular JavaScript code can do. But like it can make Ajax calls to server, but there's something that it cannot do, which is it doesn't have access to DOM. It doesn't have access to window. So um, yeah, let's see a small demo. So this is a web page that I have created. You have blooming flowers. You have a link which you can click on and you can enter a number. So let's see what JavaScript code is doing. It takes that number, it makes square of that number, and then uh, it runs a for loop for that many number of times. It creates a result and sends it back to the web page. So right now we have our simple plain vanilla JavaScript and let's give it a number so you get the result. Now let's give it a big number. Uh, yeah. So now flowers are not blooming. You cannot click on the link and your UI is unresponsive. You can just sit and wait for JavaScript execution to get over, which is frustrating. And this is unresponsive UI and this is when you get such dialogues. Okay, so now the JavaScript execution is over and you see the result. Let's see how this problem is solved by a web worker. So let's go ahead and comment the regular JavaScript code and uncomment the web worker code. Uh, so, okay, on line 61, we can see that a worker thread is being created. And this is the code which runs in worker thread. So it's the same code, like number is being squared and then for loop is running and then result is created. So let's refresh it and see. So let's start with that same small number you get the result, not much change. But now let's give it a big number. You see that your flowers are still blooming. You can still click on the link. So this is responsive UI. This gives a good uh, user experience. But JavaScript execution will take the same amount of time. Your web worker is not going to make JavaScript execution any faster, but it leaves main thread to work on UI. And that's why your UI doesn't get unresponsive. So let's see how it was working behind the scenes. <clears throat> so this is where main thread is creating worker thread using worker constructor. And now once worker, uh, worker thread is created, main thread is sending message to the worker thread using worker dot post message and it's sending the number to the worker thread. And here our worker thread is waiting for any message from the main thread uh, by on message event handler. It takes that number and then squares it, uh, runs the for loop, and now result is created. Now worker thread also wants to send back that result to the main thread. So it does it via post message. 
And here our main thread is also waiting for any message from the worker thread, which is worker dot on message. And it receives the message and it extracts data using event dot data. At the end, worker thread can be terminated from main thread by worker dot terminate or from the worker thread itself through cell dot close. So this was all about how work, uh, web workers work. Now let's see how many types of web workers are there. There are two types of web workers, dedicated and shared. So dedicated is where a web worker has just one main thread, but shared uh, web worker is where one web worker has several main threads and it communicates via port. All right, so let's see where are web workers today in JavaScript frameworks. Web workers are not new. Uh, they are around since 2009, 2010. But recently, JavaScript frameworks have started including them in their core code. Like Angular 2.0 already has web worker in their core code. And there is a team of engineers in Microsoft who is uh, using, Re who's using React. And they are also doing some experiments in uh, React applications using web workers. And they found that if they use web workers in React application, user experiences even better. There's a Redux library called Redux Worker that uses um, uh, web workers. What they do is they put all the reducer code in the worker thread. So now this is the references. Uh, first two links are from where I got technical knowledge about web workers. Third, is, uh, third link is um, YouTube link to the conference where uh, Microsoft team is talking about their uh, experiments with uh, React and web workers. Fourth link is the YouTube link to conference where they are talking about their Redux library. Thank you. Hope you all enjoyed it. That's a great example. It reminds me of the whole reason I got into web programming, which is when I saw a MySpace page where there was a butterfly flapping around, landing on my cursor. <laughs> and I remember that. I was like, that's when I knew I wanted to be in this field. Nice. Yeah, I, what I love about it too is that um, people often talk about JavaScript as this toy language and they sometimes point out, oh, you can't do parallel programming in JavaScript, but you absolutely can, which Sarabi proves here. Um, yeah, that's crazy, like seeing those three different contexts that we just saw as like, you know, JavaScript is everywhere. Um, and it's kind of, a few years ago, people said that it was kind of derogatory, but now you see it is actually everywhere. I mean, everywhere. That's, yeah. It's impressive.